Scotland against Argentina, folks. Their tour of Argentina is in its second week after game one. It was 26-18 to the Pumas. They had a good win to break their losing run against Scotland. Uh, we look forward to game two. We're going to have some lineups, some predictions and stats, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on how things may turn out. Again, if you're in the States, Flow Rugby is the place to watch this game and the other July tests, plus the upcoming Rugby World Cup qualifier between the US and Chile. So link down in the description for Flow. But uh, yeah, Michael Checker seems chilled out, man. I've been watching his press conferences. He's giving his Spanish a go, which still seems at a pretty basic level, but he's doing all right. And he just seems relaxed, which is not something I associate with Michael Checker at the end of his Wallabies tenure. Obviously, he's one game into his Argentinian job and he's got a win, so happy times. Nothing to be too stressed about. Whereas going out of Rugby World Cup with the Aussies in the quarterfinals was maybe not the best time to be a rugby coach. So yeah, but it's just totally different. It's pleasing to see Michael Checker seemingly having a great time. Uh, in charge of the Pumas. Um, they have made a few changes, the Pumas, for this week, but not really wholesale. Uh, the front row is still Titus Chaparro, Montoya, and Cordella. And I thought those three guys did really well last week, especially at scrum time. It's an area where potentially uh, the Pumas would come under a bit of pressure, but I thought they held pretty well. Uh, Petty and Alamano are still the second row, so there's still no sign of Lavanini this week. I haven't seen him even mentioned in the press conferences, but uh, Alamano and Petty did a pretty good job. They complement each other pretty well. So I would say if it's not broken, don't fix it. And then the uh, the back row does have one change, so it's Juan Martin Gonzalez, Crema, and then uh, Bruni comes in at number eight now. Uh, apparently Pablo Matera picked up a little bit of a knock. Um... Checker in the press conference said he's a little bit tender. It was kind of like 50-50, but if you don't have to risk him, don't risk him. And to be fair, Bruni, I thought, was pretty impressive when he did play for the Pumas last year. So I'm looking forward to seeing that guy make a bit of an impact from number eight. Uh, the backs, you've got Bertrano and Carreras at 9 and 10. Remember, Sanchez is out for the tour. So he is uh, replaced at 10 by Carreras, who steps up from the bench and played the majority of the game at 10 last week. And Bertrano steps in for Kubeli. Remember, he played the whole game at 9 last week, Bertrano. He was supposed to be on the bench. He wasn't even supposed to be in the, the squad. And yet he started at 9 and got man of the match. So, yeah, good for him. Uh, so him and uh, Carreras are going to have to form that relationship at 9 and 10. And uh, the midfielders, De La Fuente and Orlando, that's the same as last week. And I thought they were pretty consistent. Um, Orlando, I thought, attacking-wise, will certainly get a, getting a bit of good go forward. And uh, the outside backs is where we see another change in that Imhoff starts on the left wing. Uh, Bofelli shifts to fullback and Cordero is still there on the right wing. But um, yeah, Malia, that means he has dropped. Although Checker did mention him by name in the press conference saying that he didn't do anything wrong. It's not kind of a snub. It's essentially just um, he wants to see Bofelli at 15. So yeah, and uh, I think he said Imhoff was... Was it Imhoff he said that was like filling in for nine in case uh, Bertrand had gone down. So he's kind of rewarding him uh, with a start on the left wing as well. So yeah, a little bit of changes, but not really wholesale. Uh, replacements, Krevi, Vivas, and Sklavi are the front row replacements, and I thought they did all right when they came on as well. Uh, Polos is the lock replacement. Isa is your loose forward. And then uh, two new faces in the 23 is Escura and Miotti. Both these guys weren't named in the Argentinian squad at all initially, but they are both called back in to replace, um, I guess, Kubeli and Sanchez, respectively. And then Moroni is still there in the 23 jumper. So that's the Argentinian lineup, like I mentioned. Not really wholesale changes, just a little bit of uh, injury replacements and a little bit of shifting around. For Scotland, they've also made a few changes. Uh, Schumann, Cherry, and Fagerson is the front row. I'm pleased to see Dave Cherry uh, get a crack. I, I don't feel like he's had a fair run in, uh, in Scotland colours, but um, he's getting a start, so I can't complain. Um, Skinner and Gilchrist are the second row, so Skinner's up from the bench. Scott Cummings has come in on the bench as a lock replacement, so that's a little bit of moving around. And then Daj, Watson, and Fagerson is a really interesting back row. Watson's getting his 50th cap, I believe. And then Daj is up from the bench at six. So that's, and, and Watson and Daj, that's two love a tackle, love a turnover uh, Lucy's. So yeah, I'm guessing they want to pinch as much ball and play high tempo as they can because, um, yeah, they didn't seem to be able to get that much kind of flowing rugby last week going. Um, Fagus is still there at eight. I thought he was all right last week, especially defensively, but didn't get as much ball as he would have liked going forward. Uh, Backs-wise, Ben White's up ahead of Price this week. They swap spots. Kinghorn's still at 10. Johnson and Bennett still in the midfield. 
Graham and Van der Merwe are still the wings and Hutchinson still a fullback. So it's a little bit of tinkering without being wholesale changes. So very similar. Uh, compared to some of the other games this week where we've got virtually no changes or you've got the Springboks changing a whole lineup. These teams are both kind of middle of the road. Um, bench, Turner, Butty, and Sebastian. So Butty's into the squad. Turner drops to the bench. Cummings, like I mentioned, Andy Christie. Andy Christie and Cummings are both new to the squad from last week. Price drops to the bench. Ross Thompson. I don't think he got off the bench last week, which was a bit disappointing. And then Kyle Rowe will get his debut if he comes on. So, yeah, statistically, I mean, the Scots don't have a lot to write home about, unfortunately. Scrum didn't get any dominance. They dropped a bit too much ball. Um, they had one slick 10 minutes where they looked really sharp, like we know they can play, and then that was about it. So even if they played like that for 40 minutes, we could have seen a very different game. But yeah, not to be for the Argentinians. They'll be pleased with the scrummaging. They were stable. They got five clean breaks to Scotland's one, which they'll be really pleased to, pleased about. Uh, Carreras is a pretty dangerous 10. Uh, he doesn't kick goals, but um, he's very much a running 10, which they will like. Um, Bofelli's boot was not that reliable with the goal kicking, so he'll get another chance to improve those numbers internationally. He's been doing it for his club, so yeah, certainly the area to improve. Um, like I mentioned, Argentina did break that losing run, but generally the games between these sides tend to be close. 41 31, 10 points, you know, 19 16, 3 points. There's one big blowout, 44 15 back in 2018, but um, yeah, 14 9. And then 26-18 uh, last week. So not usually big blowouts between these sides. Uh, the predictions-wise is, is kind of along those lines with uh, the bookies having the Pumas by five points and the rugby forecast algorithm having uh, the Pumas by a solitary point. So, yeah, folks, it could be a pretty interesting one this weekend. Um, seventh against eighth in the world. They swapped places with Argentina's win last week. They will swap back if Scotland can get a win. But you guys let me know your thoughts. Are you back in the Pumas to go two from two? Or do you think the Scots will be a bit sharper given last week's game? You guys have any thoughts? And uh, yes, I will talk to you guys again. So, see you later.